first one to welcome you to New York Comic Con 2010. Yeah. Let's do it in the box. Thank you. That was, that was pretty, pretty awesome. And you know what? There's a lot of people you know, in this world that can have a great idea, but not everyone can make it. And with that, I be I give to you the other side of the table. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start from closest to furthest away. Uh, we have the creator of Curls, Curls Studio, the Legos, the Black Magic Tales, Miss Carolyn Bolevsky. The one and only the creator of the Finder, Miss Carl Steele McNeil. Yay. <laughs> what, is, what is that? What is that weird yay? <laughs> I love it. Again. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mice Tempar. Whoa, it looks like a big screen up there. Can you tell yeah. there'd be a big screen? I yeah. want, we have surprises. It's right. I always wanted to say this, but this this lady's work puts a smile on my face. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. I'm guessing everyone knows who she is. Just yell it out. Miss <laughs> Miss Go Raina. Dang my. Yay! Uh, I feel really far away from you guys. I'm sorry. Who are you? Oh, my name is Joe Caraveo. I'm the Joe Caraveo. Exactly, so what you're going to get a peek here is a very spontaneous conversation about the other side of the table. There may be things that could be, you know, true, false, fun, we're just going to keep it loose. And I'm just going to, I'm going to go do a little back and forth, I'm going to ask a couple questions, and if you guys have any questions, any question at all, feel free to either stand or raise your hand and hopefully we'll see you and we'll pick on you and make sure you have a great question. But um, also we're giving away a, an awesome book. Uh, Yes. Carolyn, take it away. What do we have here? A book by Dave Sim, all about self-publishing. Everything you'll need to know, plus more. But, you know, you don't have to go by the guide. Take it for what it is. It is great advice, though. And we're all going to sign it. He wants it. I want it. You have to ask a really great question. Yeah, so uh, I guess... Only one is available, and it's very special. Dave Sim signed in it, drew in it. He even wrote the name of our panel in it. So. <laughs> How are we going to decide? It's just... It's just going to be a group decision, like, that's a great one, and that that's a decision can happen at any time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, fi we'll figure out who, who can get this book, but there's only one. So. <laughs> It'll be a spontaneous, <laughs> spontaneous start. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Deathmatch. I like Deathmatch. So, um, I guess the first question, I'm going to start the first question at the very beginning. Um, everyone here, was it, when you were growing up, was it your dream to work in comic books? to make comic books, per se. Yes. <laughs> yes, I loved cartoons when I was growing up, and comics led me that way. You know, just to create characters and make a story, I feel like that's a, an important thing of who I am, so I wanted to be a cartoonist. Uh, for me, it was the waterlogged box of comics at the flea market. Um, and, uh, well, you know, uh, there was no comic shop, there was no bookstore, there was no nothing in my town, and uh, it was like that old uh, old story that starts with the guy in the turban that gives you the, the evil magic book that you know, turns you into a werewolf and then it's gone and your mom throws the book out and you're doomed to be a werewolf forever. Oh no! But here's this weird little stall in the flea market, you know, with this guy who was closing up that day, giving up, throwing in the towel, and uh, he just gave me a box of books, you know, I mean, there's a water stain halfway up the box, so the comics were in terrible shape. Uh, but, you know, in that I got ElfQuest number 13 and Cerebus number 52 and Mistree and Neil the Horse and, you know, he had all his indies in one box and all the indies would fit in one box back then. And a Pacific catalog, Pacific Comics catalog, where I could get all the rest as it, as it happened, which wasn't very much. And, uh, you know, I'd grown bored with the 7-Eleven uh, the comics that were available to me. And there was just something about it being black and white that made it seem possible. 
Uh, there was something about the four color process, and even now with the, the much better computer processes now that put color on the comics, that removed it so far from my idea. You couldn't, I couldn't look at it and say, somebody drew that. Looking at the, uh, the black and whites, I could see the ink strokes, and I started drawing, and that was really all there was to it. Ta-da! I uh, went, went to college for filmmaking, and I had spent most of my life believing, oh, I'm going to be a grand filmmaker one day. <laughs> and uh, about uh, you know, eight years post-college, I came to this realization that uh, uh, there was a chance I was going to be doomed to be like an industrial filmmaker, or someone that made training videos for, for folks. And I thought, that's not what I really want to do. Deep inside, I'm a storyteller, and I've simply chosen film as the medium that I want to tell stories in, but I'm finding it difficult breaking into film. And I didn't want to go that route, so I made this kind of eight-year-after-college, mid-course transition and then spent a decade in the 90s as a self-publisher uh, that you've never heard of. Uh, Lost Cause Productions, I did a book called Spandex Tights, uh, Aerobic Superheroines. Uh, it was very, very sad, about 25 issues in the middle of the 90s. And uh, then I thought I was leaving comics until Mike Oming in the early uh, aughts kind of pulled me back in with uh, asking me to create his Mice Templar universe for him. And uh, Mice Templars put me on the map, and now I'm doing both independent comics and mainstream comics, and that's the journey. Um, when I was six, I was asked this question for an essay in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I had two answers. The first was farmer, and the second was trapeze artist. And I thought those were the two most awesome sounding jobs in the world. If you could combine um, them. I didn't think about the fact that I was an artist and that I did like to draw and that I did like cartoons a whole lot and that that might actually be a career as well. Um, and I think it was when I was nine that I finally realized, no, I definitely want to be a cartoonist. That's the end of my answer. <laughs> so once everyone decides to be a cartoonist, right on the bat, what was the one first thing that you discovered about, like, was it difficult for you? Was it something that you can easily uh -huh. jump into? Um, I discovered that writing punchlines was hard, and that's mostly because I was reading comic strips as my primary source of comics. And so the, the three panel or four panel and then punchline format was what I aspired to be when I was younger. And I was just terrible at writing jokes, and no one ever laughed at my jokes. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to figure something else out. I found the actual uh, the, the crafting of story is easy, making it success is where it's very, very hard. Um, uh, I was always confident that my art would get better because I could see which way to get into it. It was the writing that I always struggled with. So I always drew, but I kind of think I'm only learning how to write now. So, you know, you don't, don't learn it without doing it, so I keep on doing it. Yeah, again with the art, I feel like my art has gotten a million times better um, since I started constantly drawing. It, it's good if you draw every single day. I have a blog called Sketch Before Sleep, and I make effort to do an illustration every night. Sometimes you can tell I really just want to go to bed, <laughs> and, and I do it. But I don't want to spend more than half an hour a day on it, but at least it's an exercise that breaks me up that is good to do just to say, hey, I did something every day. That's a good question to run off, like transition into. Are there ever times where you're like, oh, I just don't, I can't do this today. What actually keeps you going? Is there anything where you're like, you look at a photo and you're like, oh, that's why I'm doing this, or you watch a movie, like, what is actually your, your inspiration to keep making new work? After everybody. <laughs> do you have a trick for it? Um, I try to at least have a new book at every show I appear at. Um, sometimes it's hard in the fall because there's a lot of conventions every single weekend, but um, the goal is to do that. Have, a, have something to premiere every time you make an appearance. There are tricks. There's a million. Once you've used one a couple times, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so you have to kind of, you know, you can't, you can't let pursuit of a trick push you too far. I mean, I, I even wrote a whole book about, uh, about that trick in a way because uh, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's a book called Talisman, and it's about a, a little girl who falls in love with a book when she's too young to read it and loses it when she's old, can't get it when she's old enough to actually read it and spends the rest of her life essentially trying to recreate it. 
and uh, she goes all over town telling herself she's not going to bother with this anymore. You know, she thinks she's a bad writer. There's no point in it. She's going to she's 